to prepare for the sacred mysteries. As we hear the gospel, we are to render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Certainly being good citizens of this earth, living up to our responsibilities, but render unto God what is God's. And that's everything. And so even when our faith comes to bear, the decisions we make, and the values we stand for, and how we make our choices, we pray for that wisdom. And we ask forgiveness for the times that we have compartmentalized our life, giving a compartment to God and His law, and then a compartment to the other parts of our life. Let us come with repentant hearts. <laughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words.
the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love, and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Inspired by many of you who have written me notes saying that 
I'm blessed in that we did not experience economic hardship through these times, and so because of that, I'd like to share something in gratitude. And so it's in that context that I, I understand all of that, and yet, come with today's message. Next Sunday, friends, we will celebrate when Catholics in Portsmouth, 86 years ago, united as one parish, dedicated their new church. Construction began as our nation was just emerging from the Great Depression in 1933. Next Sunday at all the Masses, as we do each year, the last Sunday of October, we use not the Mass of ordinary time with reinvestments, but the festive Mass of the anniversary of the dedication of a church. And we are reminded that what we say of the building is to be said of us. And we'll pursue that next Sunday. And also next Sunday we'll have the joy of welcoming brand newly ordained Deacon Bobby, next Saturday I'll be at his ordination in Boston, and then in his first assisting his Mass as a deacon in preaching, he'll be with us at 10.30. Again, a reason that we, in these days, are referring to ourselves as embracing a future full of hope. So that's what we'll be doing next Sunday. Today, however, we remember when we were a year ago, dreaming, planning, for the demolition plan, for repurposing, and for the restoration. It was on this weekend, a year ago, that we launched Embracing Full of Hope, our capital campaign, with an initial goal of $2 million, from what we could ascertain was the needs of the time and the information that we had. Yes, that was the third weekend of October. And just before Thanksgiving, through the generosity of many of this parish, we had reached and exceeded that goal. In the months that have followed, we have continued to receive contributions that have surpassed it by over $70,000. And so my first point today is to say thank you. We were dreaming, there were pictures on paper, and there were hopes. But we stand in a very different place today. We're nearing the completion of what began on March 17th, the day the demolition began at the school. Rather ironic, but the Feast of St. Patrick. But it was also the day we celebrated the last public Mass in the church. When that church was built, it was out of, out of a condition and time of great stress and depression. We began this project as COVID-19 was throwing everyone into a pen. In my letter this week, and I'm not going to go into the detail from the pulpit, you know how to read, but in my letter I, I detail some of the surprises that have met us in this past year. COVID is starting. And then on a practical level, which has a financial impact, when you restore old buildings, I've been quoted to say I would build five new churches before I ever restore an old one again. There is the unknown. However, there's also the precious gift that in building something new, you don't bring out the hidden beauty, the richness, and the artistry that you will soon see has been the result of this effort. So one of the surprises, of course, was the COVID situation, which never delayed any of the work and thankfully kept many people employed because of the nature of demolition being something that just couldn't be stopped. Of course, so while many things were shutting down, those men were able to continue uh, that kind of project, especially in the conditions that they were able to work. And the same is true in the church. As work progressed, we recognized that it would not be enough to simply enhance the lighting, but that the church would need rewiring. I don't think I have to go on and explain what a process that is. But that was necessary not only to provide enhanced and adequate lighting, but also safety. As we began building the catwalks behind the walls, this endeavor, there are many evidences that we need to be grateful to God that the building didn't burn down many times in many years. All of that is now remedied. We then, on the weekend that Sunday Gospel was about the buried treasure, encountered something else. I got a call one afternoon and said, Father, we've had to stop excavation. Beneath the 
massive roots of that huge tree that used to be back there. Beneath that, so that goes, tells you how old it is, was some kind of well. And next to that was the source of some of the pipes, the drainage, the sewage, you know, that from the church. The bottom line was that was a surprise that then led to necessary underground work, which has delayed. It was supposed to be done by early September. It will be done in mid-November outside. It delayed the project. It also increased the cost. So again, in my letter to you, in the bulletin this week, I outlined the details. So what's my intention today? On one year after launching the capital campaign, as I said, first is to say thank you for bringing us to this point. Secondly, is to ask reflection on getting us to the goal to complete this whole project. Because since we had to invest more in these surprises, we still have awaiting us the masonry, the water remediation, so as to be sure that the building is very tight. There are a number of areas of concern. We propose to begin that work in the next few weeks. So as we move in, outside in certain spots we see scaffolding. It won't affect our use of the building at all, but it will be an ongoing project. So that needs to be addressed. And so, at this point also, as we're nearing, we will be paying the final bills for everything that has been done so far in the month of November. And as you realize, when you have a capital campaign, People make pledges and they're paid over a period of time. So when we have no longer cash flow, which we still have money, so many people were so generous in paying their donations up front and bringing, giving very generously, that we still have cash flow from the capital campaign. We still have 834,000 pledge to still come in over the period of the next two years. We also have been blessed with numerous other supports, acts of generosity. And so, of course, when everything is done, the money to pay this will come uh, from taking out a small, uh, short-time loan from the Central Fund of our diocese, and then as the pledge payments come in, to repay that, which I anticipate to be no more than a year. So that being the case, what am I asking today? I first to say, if you pledge, please know that your generosity is deeply appreciated. If you're among those who made initial contributions, you should be very proud of your generous spirit in response. From, from approximately 40% of this parish giving, we reached $2 million. At this point, we now need to get to the final goal, because of those situations that emerged, we need to reach that $2.5 million effort. Which means that we need a little over 400000 from the 60% of the parish that remains. So if you have pledged and you're making an annual payment, I would ask you to consider, if possible, making this year's payment now in year two as soon as possible in the fall to help us to have the cash flow at the end. So as have to be able to avoid having to take out any kind of loans. Secondly, there are those of you who gave a very generous donation and said you felt more comfortable giving a donation rather than pledging over the years and said in year two and year three. All things being equal, if you were able to, you would give a similar contribution for year two and then one for year three. I was overwhelmed by that because your initial contributions were generous. If that's still your intention, thank you. I'd ask you to consider doing that over the coming weeks. That additional donation that you decide to give will help us to reach that goal. And then finally, if you have yet to invest in any amount, very small, I would ask you to please consider in helping us to pass on our legacy to the next generation to embrace a future full of hope. If you're new to our parish or you never got one of the campaign packets that outline the whole thing, I put some on the table. As you're leaving, you'll see them on each side. They have the beautiful logo of the bell tower that one of our Christians designed. And today I thank the committee and the people who put 
put so much work into launching and managing the campaign. So if I'm not invested yet, consider taking a packet. Read through my letter in the bullet. Feel free to approach me if you have questions. But maybe you could give us a sacrificial gift. Or you could let us know that you're going to give an amount and you want to space it monthly or however you want to do it over the, the next remaining two years of the campaign. Just communicate that to us in an envelope that you write capital campaign on, either drop it in the collection next Sunday or mail it into the office. Just like to have an indication as soon as possible as to what we can expect as we reach um, so close to this goal. So thank you for what you gave. And if a pledge payment is coming up and you're in a position to accelerate it now, that would help the cash flow. If you thought that at the beginning of each year you would do something, but now it's in year two, thank you if you're able to do that. If you get to invest, I encourage you. No matter what we give, no matter what we give, when you see the beauty of what has been accomplished, yes, we give to Caesar, we give to charity, we give to lots of things. But this is about God's glory and His worship. Once the woman who bathed the feet of Jesus with oil was criticized, that could have been given to the poor. Beware of that kind of poverty. It's been my experience in my priesthood that people who most generously come to the needs of the church are the ones who also are very generous with the poor. And so it's not either or. It can be both and. This is purely for the glory of God, for the embracing of a legacy, for the future full of hope, and to pass me on to the next generation. That's it. Read my letter prayerfully. Consider what you can do. Respond within this fall season so we know what we can expect. My hair has gotten a little grayer, and I would lie if I could tell you that I'm feeling the fatigue of overseeing this project. I did it when I last did it. I was 40, not 60. Uh, but it has been a labor of love. I know your prayers are what sustain me, your personal support is what keeps me going. And I ask that now as we invest, we all become a part of the joy of seeing what we can do for the Lord and the generations to come before us. You know, I'll end as I began. There was a very, very old man who won a lottery. But his family, when they got to know this, were afraid to tell him. It was two million bucks. And they thought, oh my Lord, we might a heart attack. So they asked the, the parish priest if he would mind coming gently sharing the news with him. So the priest said, certainly. So he sat down and they sipped some tea and he said to him, Marty, if you won two million dollars in a lottery, what would you do? And without missing a beat, Marty said, I'd give half of it to you and the church father. The priest clutched his chest and have a heart attack. I'm not asking you to put me in an early grave. By helping hands, I'll take it. God bless you. I believe it was God the Father of the Almighty, the maker of that earth, and of all the things to the Lord in this world. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages. God from God.
fall in love, share the truth, and hold out the way who is Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For responsive hearts in all who are considering investing in our capital campaign, and for abundant graces for all who have done so today, and who continue to offer their personal and prayerful support as our parish moves forward in embracing a future full of hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who seldom, if ever, practice their Catholic faith, may they experience what they need to find their way home, healing, discovery of truth, fellowship and love, and most of all, a God who wishes to unite them to his Son at the Eucharistic table. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the protection of all in military service and others in our city police and fire departments who put themselves at risk for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those discerning church vocations in our diocese and in our parish in particular, we pray to the Lord. Lord For all our deceased relatives, friends, and benefactors, especially Mark and Patrick Durgan, for whom this Mass is offered, may they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the needs of one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord Today we lift up especially the soul of retired Bishop Lord Gendron. Bishop Gendron in 99 is the oldest living bishop in the the United States. He died last night very peacefully. May the Lord receive his gentle shepherd into the fullness of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. I send you down your spirit upon them like the new fall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he could pray. Giving thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, eat it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory.
last Saturday morning, and then he'll be with us next Sunday at 10.30 uh, to preach, it says. All Souls Day is coming, we're having the novena. If you need to get an envelope to enroll your deceased loved ones, they're on the little table at the back. And then finally, on the bigger table where the offering basket and bulletins are, are some packets. We mail those out to every household in the parish last year. If you didn't get one, or you do, feel free to take one. The whole idea of this project is, is in there, and there's also a response envelope. But you don't need that to respond. Uh, if you are interested in helping us move forward, you can also just write it in a note. But please, put it in a separate envelope, mark capital campaign, so that uh, Kate doesn't pull her hair out. Uh, and we move forward. And remember, in everything else I said, if your kid ever swallows a coin, you know you're there. I don't know if you tell me if you won the lottery. I might be there a little quicker. <laughs> And even if you can't shove something up his nose, I'm an expert. I can still remember my mother looking, trying to figure out how to get it out, and I just went up to my brother and grabbed his nose with it. I liked squeezing his nose. He said, ow, the thing crushed. And all of a sudden. Let us pray. Grant the Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in the present age, Prepare for gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. If anybody has any questions for me today on any of this, I'll be outside in the back with the mask on so we don't have to distance you. Come right up and uh, ask away. The Lord be with you. May yes. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorify the Lord.